An ideal situation, so a Mars-sized object, has the potential to have a lot of radioactive decay going on in its core, keeping it warm, opening up the potential for an ice shell world, right? Right. And there, <laughs> there could be space whales. <laughs> well, you know, I would, I would love for there to be space whales. I, <laughs> I wouldn't say I would put my money on it because you would need a lot of radiogenic decay to maintain a liquid ocean over four and a half giga years. But that would be awesome. I mean, that that would be truly unbelievable if we could explore an alien ocean. I mean, doesn't get much cooler than that. Or even if it no longer exists and we do what we're doing at Mars, look for evidence of past life on it, where it was in its original system, maybe. I mean, it would have been probably pretty distantly orbiting from its parent star, but still it's red dwarf or something like that, that you could look for maybe a zone of habitability that this thing once had and no longer does. It's frozen solid, but it'd be great for the paleontologists. Exactly. Exactly. And I, I'll add that, you know, because so the probability of, of capturing a free floating planet is much, much higher in the solar birth cluster than it is in what we call the galactic field, you know, after the sun left the birth cluster, just our galactic neighborhood that we have today. And that has to do with two things. One is the velocity dispersion, so the typical speed of the other members of the population. And it also has to do with density, so how, how close we are to the nearest star. But what that means is that since such a planet or such planets there may be a population of these things, Mercury and Mars-sized planets in the outer solar system, would come likely from similar stars to the sun. So in a way, they could be a window into an alternate reality for the solar system, like an alternate pathway keeping the initial conditions the same of the same kind of star born around the same time in the similar environment. Do you end up with something that looks like Mars or Mercury, or do you end up with something very different? And, you know, that would be an enormous, enormous wealth of, of information in terms of understanding the habitability of the universe. Oh, it'd be absolutely amazing. I mean, it's, it's like you said, you don't have to go to another star system if something like this exists and can be shown to be of uh, interstellar origin. The thing is, is that once you do that, it's very easy to tell. If you get a rock from that thing, I mean, the isotope ratios would be just nothing, <laughs> nothing close to what we see in the solar system. Right. And that would tell you. But I wonder if anybody could think of a way, say, again, hypothetically, we find something like this and, you know, 50 years from now we send a mission or starship or something like that that can reach out there. The question is, would we be able to infer what type of star it originally formed around? I mean, would there be anything that might give an indication of, of, you know, leave a mark of sorts if this thing formed around a red dwarf or, you know, something like that? Yeah, well, I, I, I think there might be some ways to do so. I mean, I'm, I'm not an expert in, in, in that field, but I think depending on the types of samples that we were able to get on the planet and, and the depth to which we were able to obtain them, combined with, you know, a lot of folks do models of the formation of exoplanets. So you, my, my guess is that there might be some way to combine exoplanet formation models, which take into account the star's metallicity and age, etc., plus the measurements in terms of what we find in terms of abundance ratios of the actual elements. Obviously, a terrestrial planet would have a differentiated or would likely have a differentiated crust I'm hopeful that there would be some ways to combine the data with models that have already been made to infer the things that you're talking about, about the star's age and, and, and type. But you know, my guess is that if it was captured, I mean, that, that it would likely be from a very similar start to the sun. <laughs> 